So for today's webinar, we have um, Emily. So Dr. Emily Barker from um, CMC at QWA. So uh, Emily will uh, present us uh, a bit of the data management journey at, um, at CMCA. And uh, hopefully um, it will be very relatable to many other facilities. So if you have any question um, uh, or any experience that you'd like to share at the end of, of the talk, please uh, feel free to do so. So Emily, the floor is yours. Yes, so I'm the microscopy data specialist uh, for Microscopy Australia at CMCA. I've been here just over a year. So some of the things I'm going to cover will be from before I got here. Uh, it's kind of background for you to understand why we got to the point that we did. Uh, so there might be things that I missed there. I wasn't here and there might be things that maybe don't, uh, is not the recollection of people who've been around Microscopy Australia longer than me but uh, it's just what I've picked up along the way in terms of the history of what we've been through here. Uh, I'll start with an acknowledgement of country. So I am on the Wajuk Noongar land and acknowledge their elders past, present and emerging. A little bit of an overview so you can understand the different things that I'm saying. So one of the confusing things is that CMCA is actually not just the Microscopy Australia node here. We are a group of four different NCRIS nodes. So we've got uh, the Microscopy Australia, NIF, uh, Metabolomics Australia, and Bioplatforms Australia. So when I'm saying CMCA, I'm actually just talking about our part of CMCA, and it's not actually all of CMCA, uh, which is part of the problem I think we have with uh, data management because the different nodes are just quite different in what they're doing with data, and we're never going to want to do the same thing because it's never going to work for all of us. We're also quite spread out. Uh, just the Microscopy Australia node is spread across four different buildings on two different campuses. So there's a little map here that shows you where we've got our different instruments. Hopefully I haven't missed any of the instruments as well. So on the main campus down the bottom in the blue, red and green, uh, we've got the physics building where I am, where we've got EM, X-ray microscopy, SIMS and half of SPM. And then in the building next door, we have ICPMS. Across this campus, we've got NMR and the other half of SPM. And then way up on the other campus, which is probably about a 20 minute walk for us, uh, we've got the optical super res platform, which also has some confocals and slide scanners and things. So this also creates another issue with having an overall understanding of what the different parts of just the Microscopy Australia node are doing. Uh, and also just things like connectivity. Uh, being able to transfer data. We have a lot of users who use instruments in all the different buildings and we have to try and come up with something so that they're not learning something different for every single platform in terms of data transfer alone. Uh, we don't want to do it differently on every single instrument so that they have to learn something different every single time. Obviously with this wide range of microscopy we've got a lot of diverse data needs things from megabytes maybe in imaging to terabytes with the cryo TEM. Uh, a lot of people need special software, the CT using a VISO, a lot of people don't and they're just taking images. Uh, so it's difficult to have something that's going to work across all of our, CM our part of CMCA. And then this becomes a bit of a problem with the university as well, because traditionally research infrastructure centres, which is what CMCA is called at UWA, have not been all that well integrated into the UWA systems. So when UWA sits down and talks about what are they going to do for networking and what are they going to do for data storage and data management, the research infrastructure centres weren't really considered. So they were considering things like the documents on your laptop and PhD students, but that is very different to the large amount of data that we're generating in a research infrastructure center and how we might like to use that data. So because of that, a lot of the systems here just don't work for us. There's also no e-research department at UWA, which means that things are kind of split between IT and the library, and then sometimes other areas like the schools. We also don't fall into a school, which means it's hard to have a direction for data management in terms of, like if you're looking at fair data, or even just data storage. So networking and things, or what we're doing with our instrument computers might be done by IT, but then something like PIDs for Instruments is done by the library. 
and it's hard to get all of that together without an e-research department. So our part of CMCA was part of the ACCS project, which pushed us forward in terms of looking at data management. This was a few years before I was here. There was Andrew Maynard, who was the data specialist at the time. So he was on the ACCS project here. And they tested a lot of data repositories for CMCA. So I know they looked at Amiro, MyTardis, and using our UWA storage. I think they also looked at iRODs. And obviously, there's upsides and downsides to all of the different uh, types of data management systems. Amiro, I know, didn't work for us because it's great for optical data, but it's not great for a lot of other types of data. The university storage wouldn't do things like capturing metadata, uh, so that was out. Also, you couldn't do automated push to storage. So they ended up landing on MyTardis and choosing to go with that for developing a data management system. I know they chose it because they'd be able to scale it depending on how big we got, how much data we had. Uh, it was open access for them to start modifying it for us and to make it work exactly for us. We liked that we'd be able to have the raw data upload direct from the instrument without the user having to think about it and that we would get that metadata capture with the data. It's also really important to have that offsite accessibility for our users. At CMCA, we're probably about 50% UWA users. And also when I say UWA users, they might be people up at the other campus, they're not nearby. So for them coming to get their data, if they need to transfer it again, or they had to leave before data finished capturing, it's difficult for them. Um, we've got people coming in from the other universities in WA and industry. And so we really need that offsite accessibility. Because they're not just UWA students or staff, we needed some login that they'd be able to use. So we used a secure overlay of AAF. And we had it hosted at Pawsey Supercomputing Center. And this is so that we would have a direct link to being able to put our data for HPC uh, and also for virtual research environments. We had a developer here named Dean Taylor, and he developed it, I think, between 2019 and 2021. But I'm not sure exactly when he started. We had a test group in 2020, so we put it on a few different instruments. We had a few different users using it, and that went quite well. We made a few changes, and then we were about to start rolling it out to all of the instruments in 2021. I'd actually installed it on all of the instruments, and then unfortunately our developer left UWA, and I wasn't super comfortable with putting hundreds of users on there when we didn't have backend support. So I do still have a few instruments using it, and I do still have a few users who use that exclusively, but we haven't pushed it out to everyone. Um, but it is still running. We did also have CVL running at Pawsey for a short time this year. And again, we were about to start onboarding users with that one, but something happened at Pawsey to the database and the database got corrupted and apparently it needs a complete rebuild. And this was like two weeks before Dean was leaving UWA. So there was no way that he was going to have time. So that was kind of what we did in data management as part of the ACCS project. But obviously the issue here was that we weren't well integrated with the UWA services. So it was all relying on us. Uh, we were having to fund it with uh, the ACCS project. Um, when Andrew left, there wasn't a lot that moved it forward. So then I was hired and it start move, started moving forward again. But then when Dean left and we didn't have backend support, UWA IT was just not well placed to take it on and weren't able to take it on. So obviously this is the issue with us trying to find a solution for ourselves because the university doesn't have the kind of solutions we need, but then it's very difficult for us to run those solutions ourselves as just CMCA. So trying to move forward with data management here, uh, we have been speaking to UWA about integrating with them. UWA currently has a group that's looking at metadata capture for the university. So when we went through TrueDat with them, they were actually really happy with it, really happy with the security and the way that it ran um, and the way that it captured metadata. So they have actually started looking at whether or not they could integrate TrueDat into their services and become the backend support for it, which means then we would be able to use it for our instruments. Uh, we have been discussing with Pawsey and UWA whether or not we could do the rebuild at Pawsey. Uh, Pawsey also has a stake in this, they were involved as well, so, and I know that they have other VREs at Pawsey, so it's not necessarily something that's unusual to them, so there's a possibility we might be able to get that running again as well. 
UWA has actually currently also got a separate committee that's looking at making a new data storage system for the university. In creating this one, they have been speaking to the research infrastructure centres, so we are hoping that they are thinking about ways to deal with very large data and how you would deal with uh, metadata capture and how you would deal with data retention issues. Uh, currently, we have the Institutional Research Data Store, which is similar to, I know UQ has been talking about a similar system that they've put in recently. It's really just a lot of servers that are somewhere on site at UWA with the data. Uh, when we were running TrueDat and it was at Pawsey, we also had a backup to the UWA IRDS, and that was because UWA said you have to keep all UWA data, one copy of it, on campus. So that was our one copy on campus, and we made it the backup for what was actually at Pawsey. The issue with that, obviously, reduced metadata capture. If you're not a UWA user, you can't access it off-site because you can't get VPN into the IRDS and there's no automatic upload from the instruments. So there's a lot of issues there. It is what we're currently using um, for our instruments. So we have an IRDS that is mounted on all of the instruments. Users put their data on that, then they come up to computers that we have in a separate area to transfer their data because these are computers that they can put USBs in, they can use the internet and that kind of thing. Obviously it works, but it's not great. Also, there's security issues every time they put their data onto that IRDS for the period that it's on there, anyone else up at our computers on the transfer area would be able to see that data. Um, obviously, you make sure you don't delete it from the instrument until you've transferred it and you've got a copy, but it's not the best system in terms of data management. This is a quick video I took because I didn't want to deal with IT today. Uh, showing what the TrueDAT system looked like. So this was the login page, it's quite blank. Again, this is available still. So going through to login, it takes you to AAF. You put in your university. And then it will go to your university login. So you're not remembering a separate login for this, which makes it a little bit easier as well. We were also looking at integrating other logins to this, like login with your Google email and things like that. And that was for our users who were industry-based maybe. And then this takes you through to where you've got your data in your project. It was relatively easy for me to manage the users as well. If they logged in, it populated them as a profile and then all I had to do was give them a project. So that's my project number is 0044. And then you've got the data sets in here. When you upload from an instrument, it creates a data set automatically with the name of the folder. If you go through to the data set, you can see the individual images on a preview. So there's a couple of images here that have come from our Helios SEM. It shows you the uh, images on the side. You can download individual images. You can download the whole data set. If you've got a metadata schema in here, you'll also get metadata capture. You can go back to home and see your other data sets. But the idea was that we were getting all of that extra things that we need for fair data, as well as security and easy upload from the instruments, basically. There's a few other things we've been involved with at the university in terms of data management, and they've mostly been because we have a lot of data, so they come to us first, and we've generally agreed to be involved, so they do tend to come back to us. So these ones were with the data librarians. I think it was back in 2017, they decided to try having an equipment library. And originally this was going to be for the entire university, but I think they only ever got around to doing CMCA. So this is a little bit outdated. We are looking at updating this now because we have started getting involved with the Microscopy Australia PIDs for Instruments group. So this is how we're going to do it because again, we wanna make sure that we're integrated into what the university is doing rather than going off and finding a different way to make PIDs for Instruments. If we do that and then the university does it, there's no reason to do it twice. We'd rather do it the way that the university is doing it. So this still exists and we can update it. The university is also now realizing that this might be helpful again in general across all of the instruments here. So they're also looking at putting the rest of the instruments at UWA in here, not just CMCA. So this is what the equipment repository looks like. Um, so it's in Pure, which is where we have all of our uh, research portals. So your profiles and things. So this is just a big list of instruments that we've got at CMCA. I went to one that was relatively up to date, which is our Titan TEM. 
Uh, and then it gives you a whole heap of metadata that is about the instrument. All of this is pushing to RDA and then through to data site. So you can look up our instruments. It's got where the instrument is. It's got a description of the instrument. There's who runs the instrument so that you can contact them, the handle, the website. So a lot of these things tick off the things that we would need for PIDINST as well. Uh, under the hierarchy, you can see that this is part of the electron microscopy level, how you can book it, different things that you can do on that instrument in case people don't necessarily know they need TEM, but they know they need to get certain types of analysis done. It shows the fingerprint, which is actually just areas where people have said their publication was in that type of research. There is only two publications linked to this instrument, and obviously we've had more from the Titan than that. But putting in these publications and linking them is actually very heavy on the user time. So you have to put in the publication name, you've got to put in all the names and link them to the profiles of the people, then you'd have to link the instrument, the grants. It's a lot of sitting there and manually typing it in. I think the university is looking at making that a bit more automated. Honestly, even me thinking about it, I'm not sure how you could make that a bit more automated. I guess you could have a self-populating list, which might make it easier, but it's still a lot of time for students and staff members if they're going to link these things. So that's where the system does fall down a little bit. We were also involved in a pilot program for data set metadata capture and publication, again, with the data librarians and in the pure system. A lot more people have done this now and put their data sets in there, and that's probably people who've been forced because of where they've published their data. I think we were the guinea pigs with this one again. So under CMCA, you can go through to data sets and then see the list of data sets that have been linked specifically to CMCA. So again, I think I went to one that I knew was from our platforms specifically which was one from the uh, X-ray microscopy platform uh, with Jeremy Shaw. Yeah, okay. So it gives the information of who was involved with the data set, uh, the different areas, like the research infrastructure centers and schools, description of the data set, there's a DOI. You can access the data set or that can be a contact person as well. Um, the research output and how you cite the data set is all in there. Again, this is extremely manual for the user. You have to type things in. You've got to find what FOR codes you want to use. Um, it takes a long time. We were actually looking at whether or not we could put an API from TrueDAT and push a lot of this so that it was pre-populated for someone. So someone could log into both using their AAF credentials, say that they want to put in uh, a data set that we have in TrueDAT, and it would push heaps of that data for them. They might have to still put in a few fields, but if we could fill 27 of the 30 fields, it still makes it a lot faster. Unfortunately, again, that was right before our developer was leaving and we didn't really want to put a huge amount of time into developing API APIs when we weren't sure that we would still be using TrueDAT. But it does mean that we had a system for, we still have a system for putting our data sets in. Um, and again, this is just something that CMCA tends to be the early people uh, doing these kind of data management things at UWA. Cryo TEM, because this is what everybody is having issues with uh, data management at the moment. It seems to be the thing at every university in Australia. In, uh, during the COVID lockdowns, we had our cryo suite delivered, which obviously meant that the installation was very interesting. There was a lot of showing that the instruments were here with tablets because there was no way that the engineers could be here at the time and getting the engineers in through lockdown borders and things. Uh, we had a cryo SDM install, which I think is an IT800 JL instrument. We have a screening TEM, which is a JL F200. And then we have the cryo TEM, which is this one that's in the image here, which is a JL F200 as well. They look almost identical, except for that cryo tank in the back there. We launched the suite in 2021, and we're now this year beginning to collect the cryo TEM data. Obviously, that's where the problem happens. The cryo SEM data is not that bad, but the cryo TEM, just because of the sheer amount of it, is where there becomes a problem. We have very old networking hardware in this building. It is an old stone building from UWA. This is luckily getting updated right now, but when we installed these specific instrument rooms, we did put CAT6 in them with the idea that we would directly connect these instruments to the computers that we wanted to do the analysis on so that we're not dealing with going through the rest of the networking in the university. 
As they're doing a network overhaul right now, they're putting CAT6 in everywhere, so that is helpful. And they've now started looking at whether or not they can put CMCA and other research oh, yeah, yeah. centres on an isolated network, which would remove a lot of the uh, issues with firewalls, which is what's really slowing down our data transfer. We did get a specific computer for this. So the idea is to transfer it straight to that computer and do the data analysis there, and then users can take it from there, which means the really large data sets are only transferred once and it's not through the network. But there's a lot of issues with trying to get that set up. Because our instrument computers have certain requirements, they can't be fully supported by IT because we can't do everything that they want us to do. There's no way we can put a university uh, Windows image on these computers because they wouldn't run the microscopes. So okay. no. a lot of these things we have to work out on our own. They do help us, but what? because we're not running their systems, they can't help us with everything. So we have to try and learn those things and that makes it a lot more difficult because we can't hire our own IT people. I also have a low HPC experience, which means trying to work out how to process these things is not the easiest. So moving forward with this, uh, we've set up the analysis computer so that we can try and do it in-house. We were beta testers on the EM data processing portal. So we're hoping that that will help as well. But just trying to get data somewhere that we can push it there with Globus is quite a few hours, even with that. Um, we have started working with the UWA HPC manager. So we're hoping that the UWA users at least would be able to use the HPC cluster here for free uh, if we can get CryoSpark running on there. And we're investigating what the best options are going to be for different user groups. So people from UWA, people from other WA universities, and people from industry, because the services they can access are different. And so there's a good chance it's going to be almost a case by case basis of where the data is going to go and where it's going to be processed. So this is the thank you slide. This is our entire CMCA team for Microscopy Australia and the general CMCA people. Um, I do wanna thank the massive team who helped with the EM data processing portal. Uh, just getting CryoSpark up and running is quite painful and I know we were possibly one of the more painful beta testers because it just would not install here. Uh, Microscopy Australia, David and the data and informatics committee received a lot of emails from me when we were trying to buy the computer for the uh, cryo TEM because it's just not my background and we needed to make sure that we're getting something that would work. Uh, the UWA IT team and the data librarians have been helping us a lot in terms of what are we going to do in terms of data management and how are the best, what are the best ways for us to connect instruments and data storage? So that's been super helpful with people on these lists. Oh, and because I spoke to Martin and Peter this morning, conference next year. <laughs> Poster abstracts are still open and uh, we do have a data thing, which I think is quite large this year. It'd be really great if we could uh, get more data people over to Perth for the conference next year.